Hello everyone, The Walking Virus here. Today we'll be reviewing an open world sci-fi post-apocalyptic RPG by the name of Elix. And while it may sound like it's trying to be a mix of Fallout and Mass Effect, I'd have to say that's not particularly wrong while also being not quite right. Suffice it to say there's a bit to break down here, so let's get started. This is the good, the bad, and the bland of Elix. This is a very strange beast that was developed by Piranha Bytes, the studio behind the Risen and Gothic franchises. The game takes place on a planet that's totally not Earth after a catastrophic meteor strike that brought a new element called Elix, which fuels new technology, magic, and super drugs, and focuses the narrative on finding the answers of why our main character, who also happens to be a member of one of the antagonistic forces of the game, got shot at the beginning of the game. And like most open world RPGs, Elix puts a lot of its focus into the quest lines, the general lore of the world it's presenting, the moment to moment combat, and the feeling of exploration. But does it execute its focus points or anything else particularly well? I really enjoyed the plot setup for Elix. Having a main character that can shape the world with his decisions starting out as an antagonist with limited resources can allow for some very interesting storytelling and felt like a very driving force for the majority of the game. Combining this initial setup with some of the morally gray choices you can end up having to make kept me engaged with the story for a while and initially made me wonder what they were going to do with the narrative. Elix also put a lot of emphasis on the lore of its universe, so it was a bit easier to get absorbed into the narrative to begin with and made me want to explore a bit more to try to find more text logs and other lore easter eggs. Unfortunately, that's about all the things that I feel Elix did well, so it's time to talk about what I feel it did poorly. The flow of combat can feel very clunky and unbalanced, with most encounters with enemies around your level feeling severely one-sided in one shape or form with most enemy attacks taking a rather significant chunk of your health, there is also kind of a rather scarce supply of healing items, so without a bit of luck you could potentially be looking at quite a few retrace steps and some rather lengthy loading screens. Now, in combat, one of your primary defensive options is to dodge to try to avoid enemy attacks. Unfortunately, the enemy will sometimes track through your dodge to hit you anyway, and it will often require very specific timing. You can eventually unlock additional abilities as the game goes on to mitigate some of the problems in combat, but most of it comes down to manipulating the AI or letting your companions tank most of the hits as often as possible. Those unlockable abilities also come at a rather steep price as your financial resources are incredibly limited throughout the majority of the game, and each upgrade comes with a hefty blow to the wallet. It all ends up leading to a lot of really frustrating encounters that aren't particularly engaging and end up feeling like more of a chore. With so many elements of the combat feeling very frustrating, it actually makes the exploring and quests a rather frustrating endeavor as well, since the game will constantly send you into areas you have no right being in at the time. But now that I've ranted about what it's done wrong, I suppose I should talk about the parts that just weren't upsetting, but weren't particularly good either. The jetpack was a real disappointment. When I saw them touting that you had a jetpack, I was excited to be dropping death from above and having a bit of vertical maneuverability. But unfortunately, the fuel amount that it ends up with is laughably small. It's still slightly useful to help you traverse certain areas of the world, but it just doesn't feel particularly good to use it. I also personally found the locations of most of the fast travel points to be a bit odd. Aside from a few of the more obvious ones outside of cities, they seem to kind of be sprinkled randomly throughout the world and in really obscure places. And unfortunately, the biggest letdown for me was that the story that had made me feel invested fairly early on just ended up feeling very uninteresting and bland towards its second half, as all of the interesting themes and ideas that were brought up seemed to be resolved or dropped in more and more peculiar and generic ways. I think that's all I really have to say about Elix, so I guess it's time we head to the wrap-up. Elix is a game that has a lot of neat ideas and premises that gets dragged down by its inability to commit to the themes it tries to present and some very oddly designed combat. Overall, I did enjoy some of my time with the game, but I don't think I could honestly recommend it to too many people at its current price. 
but if you're really looking for a sci-fi fantasy open world RPG and don't mind a steep learning curve with the combat, then Elex might be able to satisfy that itch, although I would highly recommend waiting until it goes on a good sale to do so. Thank you so much for watching everyone, I'll hopefully be back soon with another review, and until next time, keep gaming.